Hi, and welcome to part two of Sudoku. This is a game, a numbers game, that is a really interesting, challenging puzzle game that starts off really simple but has levels that can get really difficult. This is part two, and if you watched part one, we gave you the basic strategies on how to play this game, and we also solved the twos. In this part two, we're going to start to get into more complex strategies in what I call pencil marks so that you can understand how this game works. Um, pencil marks is called pencil marks because most people play it in a newspaper or a puzzle book where you need to write things down. And the reason it's pencil marks and not pen marks is because you need to do a lot of erasing. So in the previous one, uh, we did the twos. And really, the strategy here, as we move on, is to start to do that with every single number. And what you want to do is you want to start to look for numbers, situations where you can, where numbers can go. So we're going to start. We're going to start with the number uh, seven. And I'm going to click on seven. And I love this program because it shows you where the other sevens are in the board. And in this particular case, we can see, if we look at column one, there's no seven. And there's no seven and seven. There's no, there's no columns here. What we're going to do is we're going to learn how to put pencil marks in for the sevens. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to look at all the possible places where a seven could go. Since there's a seven in this row, could a seven, we don't need to put any sevens in this top row. Now let's move on to the second row. Well, since there's a seven in this box, these do not need a 7. And because there's a 7 here in this column, these do not need a 7. So it's possible that a 7 could go there. So we put a pencil mark of a 7. In this particular box, we know, again, they can't go on the top two. And we also see a 7 in this row, so a 7 can't go there. But a 7 could go here, a 7 could go here, and a 7 could go here. And the reason is, is because there's no 7 in the columns. There's no 7 in the rows, and there's no 7 in the box. And now if we go into this box, there's already a 7. This box already a 7. Here we have a situation where since there's a 7 here, it can't go here. Since there's a 7 here, it can't go here. So therefore, a 7 needs to go here or here. So, but now look, we already have a 7 here. So therefore, a 7 can only go in one space and that's here. So we're actually not even going to need to put the pencil mark in. We're actually going to put the real number in. Now what I love about this particular program is that as soon as you put in a 7 here, notice the pencil mark of the 7 here went away here and here. And by doing that, the reason is because you put a 7 here, so therefore there's no reason to have a pencil mark there because a 7 can't go there. Let's keep going down to this uh, one here. Again, we've We've got a 7 in this column, so a 7 doesn't go here. We've got a 7 in this column, so a 7 can't go here. Really now, a 7 can only go in one spot, and that's there where the green is. We don't even need a pencil mark. We can just put that in. Uh, now let's deal with this box. In this particular case, if there's no 7 in here. It's our last box that we have to deal with. And because there's no 7 in the top row, a 7 could go here. 7 cannot go here because there's already a 7 there, but a 7 could go there. So we're going to put the pencil mark in here, and we're in this box, we're going to put a 7, because a 7 could go there, there's no 7. A 7 could go here. Now notice that a 7, that means in this column, a 7 could go here and here, which is why you're doing these pencil marks. You're just finding out all the possible places a 7 could go. A 7 cannot go here and a 7 cannot go here, and a 7 cannot go here. So what we've done is we've put a 7 in all the possible places a 7 can go. Now what's interesting about this is when, and now what most people do is they do this with all of the pencil marks of all of the numbers. So in this particular case, I'm going to go into a program that says fill in pencil marks, and I'm going to just fill in the pencil marks of all nine numbers. Now we can get to the more advanced strategies. When you click on a number, what you want to do is you want to find a spot where after you've put in all your pencil marks, there's only one number that's possible. And I'm looking right here at this number 9. If you'll notice, every number except 
not, uh, cannot go there except for 9. And therefore, it's easy. We're going to put in 9. And what I love about this is as soon as I put the 9 in, in this program, anywhere that there's a 9 that it can't go, it'll automatically be erased. Normally, you have to do this and erase it yourself. Oops, hang on. Let me fix that. Put a 9. And by doing that, I remove the 9 here, 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 anywhere there was a 9 that was in the row, column, or box, it's been removed. And what we can do is we can move on to this base, the simpler strategies, which is as I highlight each one of these numbers it, in green, it tells me in pink where all of the pencil marks are. And in some cases, you're, gonna, you're starting to look for situations where there's only one row, column, or box where that number could possibly be. So one, I don't see anything popping up. Two, we've already solved all the twos in the previous lesson. In three, look at the pink marks that have come up. And in this particular box down here, three can only exist in one of these nine boxes right here. And also, three can only exist in, right here in this column. Therefore, we can start to fill in by putting a three there gets rid of where the threes were here and here. <clears throat> we see that a three can only be in this box in one spot, so that must be a three. We can see up here in this box that a three can only be in one spot in that box, and by doing so, it creates a situation where there can only be a three in one spot in this box. And by doing that, it creates a situation where three can only be in one box in this box. And so now we've solved the threes, and also what we're doing each time is we're starting to remove pencil marks. So we've gone through the one, and like I said, there wasn't many uh, obvious things to do. We've gone through the twos, we finished the twos, we finished the threes, and now we're just going to quickly look at the other numbers. Now in this four, for example, here are all the possible fours. And if you look deeply, it's not that you're just looking for a number that's in a box by itself, but you're looking for a number that could be in a column or row by itself. And you see this pink one here, even though there's other possible places where the four could go in this box, if you look at this as a column, then four can only go in one place, which is there. And if you look at this row here, even though there's other options, there's only one place in this entire row that a four is allowed. So we actually, we could put a four there too. And again, it's slowly removing the unneeded things. Now we'll just quickly go on and take a look at five. Now, if you look at column two, which is this one right here, these are the fives, you'll see that a five can only go in one spot, and that's right there, a five or a nine. And also, it's a five or nine here. And as I put this five in, it actually removed the five there, making another singleton, which means a nine is the only number that can go there. Well, since we're here, I'll throw in the nine. Anyways, so we're still back to the fives. Um, and this is, as you can see, what we're doing. We can move on to sixes. Sixes are not so obvious, we'll skip them. We can look at sevens. I see there's a box here that is the only place a seven could go. Uh, we'll look at the eights. Again, not, well, and in the eights we have this box here. There's only one box that an eight could go in here, so an eight must go there. And by doing so, we're starting to remove more, and then finally nines. And this is the first step that you really want to do when you play this game. I see in row two, there's only one place a nine could go, and that's right here. So we'll put the nine there. And you're starting to look for places where only one can go. That's the end of lesson two. If you stick around in lesson three, we're going to start to get into more complex strategies, like looking for twos together and ways that you can deduce certain pieces of information using combinations of other pieces of logic. I hope this was helpful. Please tell me your thoughts, and we'll catch you on part three.